Good afternoon, dear students. Today, we have a live webinar with Professor Dr. B. C. Mal. This is the initiative of Learn from the IITNs from Guru Nanak IHM Kolkata. Students of Guru Nanak Institute of Hotel Management will be getting an extra edge as they will be learning from the IITNs, master chefs all across the world. We have world-class expertise to teach you. Professor Mal has completed his graduation from IIT Kharagpur. He is a great scholar and has immense knowledge about the industry. He is the ex-professor of IIT Kharagpur. Professor Mal is the vice chancellor of our JIS University. Students of Guru Nanak IHM will be learning a great managerial skills from the IITNs, apart from the regular technical skills from the hospitality experts. <laughs> you will know in Guru Nanak IHM Kolkata, you will know advanced marketing management, financial management, business management, entrepreneurship skills, leadership skills, communication skills, soft skills, so that you can achieve success in your career path with flying colors. We have also designed our syllabus to cope up with the modern trends required to be a successful hospitality professionals. Because job prospects in the hospitality professionals are huge and wide. It covers a wide range of industries like airlines, cruise line, hotels, motels, multinational companies like Wipro, IBM, TCS, banks, railways, flight caterings, hospitals, and all the travel and tourism industries supply chain management, sectors like Amazon, Flipkart, Swiggy, Zomato, MakeMyTrip.com, etc. Take admission in Guru Nanak IHM Kolkata to secure your future in the industry. We'll teach you how different organizations are doing business successfully, how to learn and implement revenue management in your career, how to use digital marketing to success your career path in the business industry. Here lies the difference between the other schools with Guru Nanak IHM Kolkata. So, Professor Dr. Bissimal, welcome in Guru Nanak IHM Kolkata. We are really, it's a real honor and privilege to have you in our webinar. And our students are eagerly waiting from the IITNs, those who have a great head on their shoulders. And the students will be learning a great managerial skills from the professionals like you. So if you kindly share, sir, and uh, first of all, I'd like to tell you that uh, the today's topic is how to be a world-class leader or how to be a nice manager in the hospitality industry. So, sir, if you kindly share your ideas and expertise to our students, I shall be grateful to you. Thank you, sir. And over to you. Uh, thank you, Professor Ghosh. Am I audible now? Yes, perfectly audible. Uh, okay, fine. Thank you so much. The thing is that I'm not a man of hotel management, so I just tell something in general, you know, how yes, to sir. become a successful human being, how, uh, how to attempt to become a good manager or a good leader, you know, because I'm not a really a manager that way, but maybe people may call me the education leader, you know. Yes, uh, you are the educational leader. Yeah. So. People, people may say so, okay, for that's fine. So uh, I just try to tell that uh, in general, how to become a good human being, how to face the challenges in life, Probably I'll also try to attempt to tell them how to become a good manager and uh, lead from the front, those kind of things. So I'll start with my PPT with, after sharing the screen, you know. So, um, share. So, uh, one minute, screen is not come. Has the screen come? No, not yet. Uh, one minute. No, it's uh, Zoom coming, sir. Zoom coming, okay. This is like this. Ah, yes, it's coming. It's, it's coming now, okay. Yes. Uh, now so, <laughs> it's okay now. Hello? Yes, yes uh, sir. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So, I'll, Perfect. Uh, so I'll start with this one. Yes, 
I go to the first one. So I'll start with the, with the quote from Swami Vivekananda. Uh, I'm a great fan of Swami Vivekananda, in fact. Uh, in fact, uh, many young people of the whole world, they are inspired by Swami's message. And yes. I'm, I'm also equally inspired. So I took the courage of visiting Chicago and the place where he's uh, delivered his historical lecture on 11th of September, 1893. You know, so I visited that place, talked to the people there. Of course, nobody's alive, but the people who are working there, they are there. So they tried to explain to me and the place they showed me. So I enjoyed it quite a bit. Anyway, so what Sanyakanda told about the education, this is known to most of the people, that education is the manifestation of perfection already man. Every man has got some sort of perfection. You have to express it, you have to manifest it. And that's what is the education. So he told that by which your character will be formed, the strength of mind is increased. It is just not learning or memorizing certain things, writing a jump paper, and then getting great and some job. It's not that, but by which your character will be formed. Strength of mind is increased and the intellect is expanded and by which you can stand on your own feet. That's what could be the education. So education is something beyond your subject. Now, after independence in 1947, uh, the government adopted different models of education, you know. So uh, probably because they didn't have any other better thing available at this time. And then after that, um, many other, I mean, commissions and committees were formed, uh, Kothari Commission, Trivunasen Commission, and many other in between. And recently you had that Dr. Kosturiangan Commission for the new education policy. So, uh, yes, what is the aim of education, I'll tell you. Many reforms already took place, as I told, and still it's continuing, and forever it has to continue. With education, the policy of education, it cannot be the same throughout our human history. It has to change. So, so we say that education should, system should be such that the students become useful to the society and they become self-reliant because we expect that from among the students, we will be seeing that all the future intellectuals, civil servants, that is IS officers, etc., company executives, some of them will become the CEO of some companies, some of them will become scientists, some will become professors, judges, of course, your profession will not allow you to become judge. Then some will become politicians and they will be leading the country. Some will be social workers. So the education has to be oriented in such a manner that they become the successful and professional and they uh, occupy any of the positions mentioned ever. Now, education is, cannot be confined within the four walls of the classroom. And that is not happening also. That, not being done also. So at Mahatma Gandhi to say to the listeners that we cannot afford to have the education, luxury of our education being confined within the four walls of the classroom. It has to spread outside the classroom. So the education is spread. In fact, uh, this GNIHM, they are trying to spread the education. They, uh, they are sending you for uh, different, uh, you know, internship programs. And plus, in addition, uh, some visits, lectures, and all those kinds of things, so that outside activities, it's not uh, all. Uh, just to interrupt you, sir, we are organizing several international competitions as well. Yes, so, like international, international uh, yes. culinary competition, international ah, ah, hotel competition. So right. these competitions are giving a global exposure to our students. That, that should be done, actually, because the whole, the whole world has become too small. It's a one village. The whole world is one village now, you know? You have to remember that. So Prime Minister Modi's message, he said that we need a paradigm shift in our education system and need to shift focus from schooling to learning. Schooling means that uh, students come to the class, the teacher, whether it's in the university, college, or school, they just give some note, teach something. So that kind of schooling to uh, has to change. It has to come to learning, whether you are learning or not. Learning maybe in different forms that we'll be gradually discussing, you know. So, now I'll be talking about the new education policy. Uh, we have seen 1984, there is change in the government. Mr. Rajiv Gandhi became a young man. He became, I think he was at this time, something like 41 years old. He became the prime minister of India. And then 1986, he started the uh, different kind of education policy. 
and change the name of the ministry from Ministry of Education to Ministry of HRD, Human Resource Development. And now again, the name has changed, I mean, has changed to Ministry of Education. So anyway, the new policies calls for the special emphasis of the removal of dispar disparities and equalize the educational opportunity to all civil girls, you try women. And in the new policy, because that day we are all connected, minister, the prime minister, we are talking two days ago. Uh, a poor man, he cannot complete the education. He goes out after first year, he gets some certificate. That is a certificate, it will be treated like a certificate course. After the second year, he goes out, he gets diploma. Like this kind of things will be there. And then entry, not only exit policy, entry policy. He can come back in future and complete his degree course. So all kinds of things are there in a new policy. New curricular and pedagogical structure for school, school, starting from school education that is responsive and relevant to the needs and the interest of the learner at different stages of their development. So, the, I mean, taking into consideration the condition of the Indian children, the education system is being framed. And it is the education which gives us the knowledge of the world around us. It's not only that we need, I mean, we read something from our book, and learn a particular subject, no. Apart from that, it gives us knowledge of the world around us and changes it something better. It develops in us a perspective of looking at life, that how do you look at life? An uneducated man, a man who is not knowledgeable, he looks at life in some different way, no better than any animal. The animal in the morning, they go for in search of food. Somehow they get their food and then they go and sleep and finally they die. But an educated person, he thinks of life in, a diff life in a different manner. So, but sometimes people have been directly with the subject, because education is the only thing, only medium that provides us the knowledge. No, it may not be, but education is the main thing which provides us the knowledge. And after, once you have the education, many other things you can have and you can, uh, through which you can gain knowledge. And uh, you know this gentleman, Dr. Sarbatul Lira, uh, yeah, all of the students must be knowing, and they celebrate the Teachers' Day on 5th of September, the birthday of this great man, who was also the Vice Chancellor of Benares Hindu University. Once he taught at Calcutta University, also Dr. Radha Krishna, you know. So he is one of the greatest teachers of India. So he says, dynamism, intellectual efficiency, and spiritual direction to the, to constitute the proper aim of education. There should be some spirituality also in that apart from intellectual efficiency and dynamism. And then what is the end product of education? He says, so free creative man, he a free man, he doesn't believe in the orthodox kind of things and all this bad kind of belief. Uh, so he does not believe he's a free man who can battle against the historical circumstances and the adversities of nature. So an uh, educated man is brought up in such a way that he can fight against all kind of adversity. Then he also told about the education, is not the acquisition of information. Uh, we think that we can uh, cram up, we can memorize certain things, just information. No, that is important. You have to have some information, but that is not all. Or the acquisition of technical skills, your technical skill, you know, suppose what are the other uh, different uh, management, uh, different system that works in a hotel. So those things you have to know, that is essential for the living. But it is not the only thing. It is the development of that bent of mind, that attitude of reason, that spirit of democracy, which will make you the responsible citizens. That is education. So apart from your technical thing, which you need to know because you have to get a job. But getting a job gives us the living, not the life. So for the life, something else you have to know. So all those things gradually will be discussing. So you have to have a good physique, you know, uh, because a healthy brain resides only in a healthy body. So this Sami Vivekananda's, this famous quotation you must be knowing, his old word Indian needs today, you are the man with the muscles of iron and nerves of steel. This I have been quoting at many places, not only in our country, but even outside. And religion will come afterwards. And be strong, my young friends, that is my advice to you. So you, I cannot say, you are my young friends, but I'm not like my children, but it will be almost like my grandchildren, you know. Uh, I'm like almost like your grandfather. So I'm just telling the grandchildren that you be 
uh, strong and you will be nearer to heaven through football that means to bodybuilding football means general things it could be any game any bodybuilding things and stand up be bold and this is the uh, very important last one stand up be bold and be strong and take the responsibility on your own shoulder and know that you are the creator of your own destiny don't think professor joint who will be able to create your destiny he'll only guide you but you are the creator of your own destiny and for that all the sakar and strength you wander within yourselves you have to remember that for that all the strength is within you you have to express it and he'll only help you to express but you have to build your own career or your own destiny so that you have to know and as i told you that you must build your body practice yoga pranayam then your um, this thing uh, meditation meditation will help you to enhance your memory power and do it for 5 minutes in a day that uh, meditation but yoga the yoga means uh, asan plus other thing asana is not the only yoga that is the body posture that is asan but yoga consists of everything together that asan and then your uh, meditation pranayam and there are few other things in fact a video may be available with the people because on 21st of june that internship yoga day i was demonstrating and many of the university students and teachers they are practicing along with me uh, through this same zoom platform and your uh, facebook so uh sorry uh, how to become good manager now do recognize these two photographs very young people who is at the top jamshed ji tata and below that sardar jyot singh uh, sardar jyot singh ji they are all good managers not that they had great education or anything but they are great managers so what should be the quality of the good managers You should be able to connect purpose to the individual and the team action. You, your company, your inter enterprise, it has got certain purposes. The purpose has to be connected to individual and the team action. You uh, alone or individual alone, nobody can do it. So team action should be there. Shine a light on the opinions of others and make them count. There are hundreds of people, thousands of people in a big enterprise. So everybody opinion has to be counted if you are a good manager don't think that you know everything no that never happens everybody opinion counts coach your team in a way that allows for a genuine candor that means that you frankness there should not be any i mean openness should be there so your team has to be coached that way that will be genuine not that you are just acting as if you are open to all the people in your company no you are a genuine candor you are frank to all of them you want their opinion and you want to act accordingly commit to one meaningful conversation once in a week with each team member you have several team members so uh, unless you discuss with them you don't know what problem they are facing so how the things could be smooth and so that is possible only through some meaningful discussion with them that will be done all of the human motivation by connecting work to person in the tendency different people have different tendencies so they want they think about that they enjoy by that so you have to connect your things over to them somebody like to play card that is bridges they think that this is how he wins and he uh, enjoys you have to tell if our company gets this order and we do this we enjoy and we feel good so like that you have to connect to the people's in it tendencies and recognize and reward the excellence if somebody is doing very good work work excellent work you just give him a uh, this thing the salute him tell him oh you have done just you praise him that gives a lot of motivation to him and at times you have to reward them maybe monetary rewards promotional reward or any other reward that's why you will see that government has got so many awards you know on 26 january on some other occasions awards are given to the military people to the teachers to many other people you know just to motivate them and care about your employees as the real change makers if you are a manager you have to care for the employees that they are the people who will help you uh, to make the change and also make your number one job the development of new stars in your company new 
people have to come up. Uh, it is, I think it was about Thomas Edison Alva, who was not a very educated man. So uh, he used to graze the animals and then uh, sometimes work in the lab of and forgetting the name of the scientist suddenly. So when you are asked, what is your best discovery? He said, my best discovery is uh, Edison Alva. He's my best discovery because I could bring him into my lab and all the discoveries came one after another. Similarly, you have to have the vision that, oh, this man has got the potentiality, so he'll become a new star. He'll be a good top manager in future. I'll become general manager. He'll become deputy general manager. This man will become assistant manager. So new stars you have to bring in. So that's what you have to think wisely. Leadership. Leadership captures the essential of being able and prepared to inspire others. See, our political leaders, Nehru was a political great leader, Jahalal Nehru, the first prime minister of India. So he, Nehru was born with silver spoon in his mouth and brought up with golden spoon. So that kind of leaders are also there. And there are leaders who have come from the very poor strata like Modi ji also. So leaders are from both the, uh, I mean, all kinds of background they come. But essentially what they have to do, they have to uh, run certain enterprises, certain countries, certain states or such things. Uh, and they should be able to inspire others. So effective leaders is based on both original and borrowed ideas. You have you know, some original ideas, but no harm in borrowing the others' ideas also if they are really useful. And that has to be effectively communicated to others that they engage them enough to act as the leaders want them to act. This is very important. You want them to act in a manner. So they will be acting in that manner only, but you have to motivate them. But they are motivated to act in that way. That is your leadership. You know, you want that they should perform this, this job in this, this way. And because you are the leader, you are telling them, so they are doing it, but they are feeling, yes, they are doing it very willingly, very happily they are doing it, but they are doing it for how you wanted them to do. So they must be personable enough for others to follow their orders. The leader should be such type of person that others will be following their orders and they must have the critical thinking skills to know the best way to use the resources. An organization has got limited resources how best to use the resources so you get maximum profit, maximum output. So this is how a leader can guide the people in the organization. Probably there may not be much difference between the good leader and a good manager, you know. Uh, and what is the experience? See, talent may be born, but expertise cannot be born. Expertise is created, you know. So. Similarly, experience. Experience cannot be taught. Experience cannot be from the book. Experience can be gained only over a period of year by working. But it doesn't mean that you work in an enterprise for 10 years or 20 years and you didn't contribute anything and you have gained experience. No, you don't gain anything. Although you have been in that enterprise for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. So if you have really gone into the depth of the problem, you have worked hard, you have innovated something, you have contributed something, you have been deeply involved, then only you have gained some experience in German, that's called Dwarf's language. They call, there's a terminology, a forum, means experience. It has different connotation. That means the <clears throat> life experience, throughout your life experience, a person who has got considerable experience, he also sometimes called he's an expert in that field. So somebody is expert in fishing. So that means he has been doing throughout the life, the fishing only, he takes the fishing vessel into the sea and he knows where to catch the fish, what kind of fishing gear, crafts to be used. So he is expert. And somebody is expert in military operation. He has gone to the enemy's country and bombed and how to bomb, how to do it, how to safely come back, you know, that. So he's an expert in that. So this is through work and through involvement, one gets the experience. Uh, communication skill. Communication is simply the act of transferring information uh, from one place or one person to another person. Now, what is there? What are the elements? What are the components? 
there is sender who is sending the message. Another person is there who is receiving the message, recipient, and in between there's a message. Sounds to be quite simple, but no, it's not so. It's very complex, I tell you. Sometimes the way people write, the way people talk, it gives a different meaning. The meaning he wanted to convey is not really conveyed. So this is the, actually this is the one way system through which your knowledge flows. Say for example, let's say we are getting electricity from Bandel thermal power station. So the power is produced there and it comes to this place, Calcutta. How does it come? To the cable, electric cable. So cable is a convenient system. Similarly, our knowledge flows through our communication system. I'll give an example. A few days back, I asked somebody that please do this work this, this way. He writes back, says, surely I'll do that uh, as per your advice, uh, as advised by you tomorrow. What is the meaning of this? As if I have advised him tomorrow, which is not possible. Then. He wanted to tell, I'll do the work tomorrow as advised by you. So, but he writing, tomorrow at the end, give me a different kind of meaning. Similarly, there are hundreds of such examples. That means both in writing, as well as in speaking, in listening, you have to also be a good listener if you want to be a good communicator. You know, uh, that is called articulation. Especially the teacher, teacher has to be a very good communicator. The manager has to be a good communicator. When you are a teacher in the class, then uh, you, you have started teaching something and then you are assuming that what you are teaching is not known to the student already. So you are teaching, but this may not be correct. And you are also assuming that what you are speaking is being totally followed by the student, which also may not be correct. So these things you have to follow. You have to know a little bit of psychology of the student and also to be part psychology of this other person with whom you are communicating. Then also uh, in the communication, there are other things. The emotion of the person, a person at some point, somebody has died in family, he is grieved and you are at that time trying to give him a very serious work. Do you think that he can do it? No. So what is the emotion? What is his cultural situation? Then medium used to communicate. You are speaking in English. That man follows only Bengali or Hindi or any other language. So you have to try to use that language, medium used to communicate. And even now, location to location also, sometimes the communication varies, you know, the type of. I tell you, for example, I was eating in a hotel in the US. I want, they don't drink usually water, but I want to drink water. I told the lady, please give me some water without ice. Give me water without ice. See, I not follow. Somebody told no, this is not the way to speak to them. You say, give me water with no ice. You know, so in India, if you say like this, people will laugh at you. But in the US, that's the way to communicate. So with no ice. So location to location, it will vary. So these things. You have to be a good communicator about this communication skill. I'll be talking a little more after some time. Now, <clears throat> that, so as a manager, as a leader, uh, you are expected to be a good communicator also. And it should be very clear. It should be audible, accurate, effective, unambiguous communication. Unambiguous, it may carry different meaning or uh, more than one meaning. Our one builder, you know, Calcutta, he was uh, creating some problem for us. So we put him into that court. What is that court called? Um, uh, consumer court. Then uh, he writes some 100 questions, which our lawyer has to reply. At one place, I still remember it was some 15 years ago. He writes, how many professors have purchased house from IIT Kharagpur? He wanted to tell that how many professors of IIT purchased house from me. He writes, how many professors have purchased house from IIT Kharagpur? 
I told the lawyer, I'll just write the reply and you submit it for that. There were many other things. I told no one had purchased house from IIT Kharagpur and IIT Kharagpur is not a builder. Because the meaning, the way he has written the English, it means as if people have purchased from IIT Kharagpur, IIT Kharagpur is selling the house. He wanted to say how many professors of IIT Kharagpur have purchased house from him. So this kind of thing, so it should be unambiguous. When you communicate, a teacher, so to speak, it should be unambiguous. You said a question, it should be unambiguous. There's only one answer to the question, then only the student can answer that. When you conduct an interview, it should be unambiguous. Otherwise, you are thinking some meaning and the person sitting in front of you is thinking of another meaning. So that is not workable, you know. So coming to the next one, purchase agreement. Because any company you have to purchase something, you have to sell something. And knowledge must be defined so that both parties and other representation and warranty, they should be followed by everybody, both the parties. That these are the terms and conditions. That if I sell you this, these are my terms, you have to pay this much, the delivery, uh, or I'm purchasing something from you, you have to deliver then by uh, step by step, 20% uh, in the first month, and another 20% in the second month, and so on. And if there is a delay, then you have to pay this much of fine. If these things are of not this standard, they will be returned to you. So all these terms, and there will be hundreds of terms and conditions, they should be very clear. The rules should be very clear, along with the information, knowledge qualifications, provide a scope of both the party knowledge and thus allocate risk between the buyer and the seller. <clears throat> so all this is very clear. There will always be a risk, there will be problem, there will be um, legal litigation may come, you know. So, without this knowledge definition, there is significant risk to the knowledge of the employees could be imputed. Uh, they could be only estimated. They could not be the correct one, even if they are not involved in preparing the representation and the warranties. So, while entering into a purchase agreement, both parties should be aware of this knowledge definition. What is the actual knowledge? about this, then you construct some knowledge out, out of this, and then you estimate something out of that. And then sellers knowledge, the person who is selling, so those things should be very clear. What is an organization? Organizations are there, many, many kinds of organizations. A club is also an organization, where the people are working together for a purpose. A college is an organization, a university is an organization, an industry is an organization. But there are a group of people who work together like a neighborhood association. It is maybe a charity, maybe a union, it may be a corporation, industry, anything. Uh, it is the act of forming or establishing something. It can also refer to a system of arrangement or order or a structure for classifying things. So there are different kinds of organization. So there are project management in a company. Uh, so they are called functional organization. Project type organization and matrix organization. We may discuss some of this gradually. So these kinds of organization and how they are run, they have to be known clearly. Time management. Time management is very essential. Unfortunately, in our country, we are not able to manage our time. And probably if there are a few reasons for our less development, that is because we sometimes, most of the time, we don't have the sense of the time management. Especially, it's a very big sort. It's the privilege of coming late. Hundreds of people are sitting, you know. So it may be in a school, college, in public, the minister will come. So he wait for two hours, and a few thousand people are waiting for him, and wasting their 2,000 people in two hours in 4,000 man hours in the state. So the time management, has to be really good uh, if you want to be, uh, I mean, really do some good work. And sometimes you are over time and make sure, sure, let us do away work. But no, there are a lot of uh, benefits. You have you know, greater productivity and efficiency, and your professional reputation will be good. When I was vice chancellor of Chhattisgarh Technical University, 
I had 100, about 100 C colleges under my university. Sometimes they'll be inviting me, sir, we are going to have a national or international conference. When can you come and inaugurate? I told, please give me the time and I'll be there. So they uh, told, I think you have to travel this 70 kilometers. So why not 11? I told him, you can have it at 10, I can reach. So they told, okay, 10. I started from my house at 830 and by about 950, I was there. So I told, this is time management. That means you have to be there on time. Otherwise, you are forcing many people to wait for you. So you'll have a better professional reputation. Your stress will be less and your opportunity for advancement will be more and you'll be achieving more and more and your career goals will be better. And if you cannot manage your time effectively, there will be undesirable consequences. Your deadline will be missed. People won't believe you. <clears throat> your workflow will be less. Quality of the work will be poor because in a hurry you will try to finish the work. While traveling, you don't start time, you may make accident while reaching your destination. So the other things, um, there are a lot of bad things for not being able to, sometimes the class starts, nature will get the one third, you'll get, well, when you start for a airport or you start to, uh, for a rail station to catch a particular train, don't you take into consideration those things? And then start early. So when you are coming to the class, why can't you start a little early, considering all the problems that have to be there at 9.30 or 10 a.m.? So time management is very, very important for any professional. <clears throat> then comes the reliability. Reliability is the probability that a product system or a service will perform its intended function. People will say that reliability of this particular product is good. That means it is tested over a period of time that people are saying a product, a service. If I take the service of that DCM company, such company, uh, they will do it better. Let me pay a little more and take their service. So that's how it happens, you know. The reliability company, reliability of a uh, product, service, and anything for that matter. Uh, so reliability is also important component of a good psychological test. A, a test may not be very valuable if you are inconsistent and produce different results every time. Uh, see, the thing is that you have purchased a gadget to see your blood pressure. At different times, you are getting different results. Do you think that will be reliable? People will believe it. It must be consistent. Same kind of result you should get. You are conducting a research, you are conducting an experiment. You are putting some input uh, X, you are getting an output Y. So for one X value, the same Y value should be at different times. Then only that is called consistent. So that type of consistency should be there. So psychologists, they consider three types of consistency over time. That means even after the change of the time, same kind of result will come. That will give you reliability across items. Uh, even different items of the same company, same make, that should give the same result and across different researchers. So, if, even if the experiment is conducted by different researcher, for that Y value, sorry, X value, the same Y should be obtained. That is called the reliability. So, the reliability of a product, of a company's service, they should be there. What is delegation? One way of delegation is you are taking a lot of people with you and visiting some place for some purpose, like Prime Minister has got a lot of uh, officers with him. So that the delegation led by the Prime Minister. But delegation has another important meaning. It is assignment of an authority to another person, normally from manager to a subordinate to carry out the specific activities. Okay, that means you are delegating this, this, this power to this man. You are the manager, there is one deputy manager, assistant manager, so on. Assistant manager number one is given this power to function like this, he'll be doing on your behalf. Assistant manager number two will be doing this. So to rely on them, and then the absolute delegation should be there. Not that uh, you told something, then he does something, something goes wrong, you can't blame him. And, and can't tell him, no, I'm changing it. You have done the wrong thing. No, he has not done the wrong thing. 
you have delegated your power to him and he, has act, he acted accordingly. So this kind of delegation has to be absolute. And then you'll find that as a whole, the result will be much, much better because you have delegated your power to so many people so they can take quick decisions and work with you much faster. Otherwise, in the typical government system, especially in a less developed country like ours, there will be so much of bureaucracy that uh, you need so many approvals and sanctions, etc., etc., and things don't work. Particularly, I work in IIT system where this kind of bureaucracy was very less compared to many other government systems. So we could work in a much faster way, you know. And like our research um, projects, we took a huge research projects. Total value of the research project of IIT Kharagpur may be now 200 crore rupees in a year. At that time, when I retired, it was something like 160 crore rupees because the professors, they feel very happy to bring projects so they don't face any problem in, for implementation, for functions and any other thing. It is immediately done. So the delegation of power is very, very important for successful functioning of any company. Confidence. Confidence comes from the fear of you know, well-being. Acceptance of your body and mind is self-esteem. Confidence comes when you know a particular thing. Confidence comes when you are physically fit. Confidence is believing in yourself. When you believe in yourself, yes, I can do this job. If you feel probably I'll be failing, I may not be able to do that. So that does not give you the confidence. So confidence comes from the courage, you know? So that brings you success and help you to connect well with others and you'll feel happier. And only you can say whether you are confident or not confident, others cannot say. And for that, you know, I'll just give some quotation of some Vivekananda about your con uh, the confidence. All power is within you. You can do anything and everything, believe in that. And do not believe that you are crazy lunatics. Ortho Punma Padal hai. Isa nahi hai. Many young people do that. Mere se kuch nahi hone wala hai. No, you can do anything and everything. Believe in that. Then you'll do marvelous thing. What Sabiye Kandar told, it can be summarized in World War. It is strength, 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 and strength. Uh, you know? Once Sami Vivekananda took a uh, holy bath deep at Benaras in the Asasamit Ghat <clears throat> and then came out of that, he was chased by a notorious monkey. He was running away. Then an old saint shouted at him, Bhagna nahi, dunna nahi, uska samna karo. Sami Vivekananda steered back and the monkey retreated back. And from there emanated his message, uh, weakness is death, strength is life, strength is felicity. So that's how you have to see that strength is felicity. If you believe that you can do marvelous things, you will be able to do. And the greatest problem is that you fear to failure. So fear to failure is the biggest problem. You are scared of the problems. Problems are there. For every problem, there is a solution. On this world, on this earth, no lock has been made without the key. For every lock, there is a key. And for every problem, there must be a solution. Then respect to employees. Respect can be defined as a consideration for the self and of others. Self-respect. If you have self-respect, you have respect for the others also. They may be your subordinates, they may be your seniors. But you have to respect everybody. You have to respect people's privacy, their physical space, their belongings, and respect for different viewpoints. Different. See, you have your conviction, you believe that this is correct, but try to also respect the other's viewpoints. Sometimes they may be correct. Then others philosophies, physical ability, beliefs, personality. One must recognize that they're a person worthy of respect. You have to respect others. So mutual respect will help you to reduce the workplace stress. If you believe the people, if you respect them, you'll have less of stress, you know. Conflict will be less, problems will be less, 
but you just don't believe anybody and then you start always disrespecting the people, then there will be more of stress, more of problem. And increase the workplace, respect will help you to improve the communication between the colleagues, increase the teamwork, and reduce the stress. And there will be more peace, more output. So please learn how to respect others. They may be your seniors, they may be your juniors, they may be your boss, they may be your subordinate. Digital marketing. Nowadays, this terminology has come, which is not there when we are young. You know, there's the use of the internet, mobile service, social media, etc. etc. What is the purpose? Purpose is that quickly we want to reach the market and we don't want to spend so much of money as people used to do in those days in paper advertisement. Yes, print media and electronic media. Uh, print, media uh, print media and electronic media, right. But nowadays, through social media, that is your digital marketing people used to, I mean, we are doing. So you have to learn this, how to do email marketing, social media marketing, paid digital marketing. Something is there. Say, for example, somebody wants to take admission in hotel management in GIS University. So he need not search this thing. First, he goes to GIS University, he will immediately click hotel management. Hotel management, that should be there. And then he directly enters into that, what are the, how, how to get admission, what are the prospects, etc., etc. So that search engine, that should be, the optimization of the search engine should be there so that people get the information easily. Then I'll give you one Abdul Kalam's message. Now I'll tell you about the general education that how you become a good human being, how you become happy and such things. I have told you about the, how to become good manager, how to become good leader, you know. So such things I've told, but I'll now tell how a teacher can bring up the students, what kind of education they should have, what should be the role of the students, such thing. So uh, this Dr. A.B.J. Abdul Kalam, till a few years ago, he is the living legend of India, most respected citizen of India, you know. So, and I had the opportunity to meet him several times at IIT Kharagpur because before he became president, he used to keep on coming in connection with the defense technology. And this Kalam, he was born in a very poor family of Rameshwaram district of Tamil Nadu. But he, and you know, after the classes, he used to sell newspaper at the railway platform of Rameshwaram. But he, but he dreamed of making India self sufficient in defense technology. And he was successful to a great, great extreme. He's a great human being. I can just a few minutes I tell about his life, uh, one part of his life when 2002. 2002, of course, I was not in India. I was working in a remote corner of Ethiopia, where even we didn't have uh, proper newspaper or proper information. Uh, only thing that we could get a TV, and the TV could be oriented towards the Indian satellite by an expert, uh, probably the satellite built by Dr. Kalam, uh, and then we could get the news of India. So Dr. Kalam was going to take oath as the president of India. Many of his friends and relatives, they wanted to be with him at this time. He told, well, you are very welcome, but don't, uh, I mean, I cannot take the responsibility of to travel at your own cost by booking a train compartment. And stay there in Tamil Nadu house at Delhi by making payment. You cannot stay in the um, presidency palace, Rastapati Bhavan, because then you become the government guest. I don't know, and my relatives, to stay there at the government cost. This, this is what is Kalam, you know. Uh, so, I mean, there are many other things about him. You can read that um, Wings of Fire. And there are quite a few scientific Indian, etc., so that you can know in more details about him. So, about the student discipline. Well, they are in the college, whether you are in the class or not, still you are under the charge of the college. So it is the responsibility of the college and the teachers to see you that you are maintaining discipline. And once you get used to it, then discipline will be part and parcel of your life. That time you will not like to be in discipline. Otherwise, in our country, many people, they like to be, they enjoy being in discipline, but no, that time you will enjoy being disciplined. So you have to be disciplined while you are in the campus or outside the campus even. And Coming to the 
a teacher shall not inflict a corporal punishment on the offending learners. If the students are doing something bad, a teacher should recognize, okay, he has done a mistake. We should try to rectify him, see that he comes to the right path. And as, as a parent, as you do for your own children, in the similar way, the teacher should do to his students. Uh, yes, some put his hands of big people. So the, say that the, what is teaching learning? The concept should be understood by the student just reading some notes or handouts in the class is useless. So the concept should be understood. Education, I tell many people that it's a broad based thing. You're not exactly what you are learning today. You'll be working in, I mean, with the same knowledge. The things will keep on changing so that you'll be able to handle that change situation. And that's why I say, Education is not the answer to a particular question, but it means to the answer to all questions of your life. In your life, you'll be facing many questions and many problems. So, it will be then uh, the teacher while teaching must ask questions. And if he does not ask questions, then probably he did not teach. The students will also be entitled to ask questions, and teachers should try to answer those questions may not be on the same day if, if not possible maybe on another day so and there should be an eye to eye contact between the teacher and the student and why does the student ask question probably you want to learn something which you could not learn from your lecture oh, okay so that was the only desirable thing not that you are trying to test the knowledge of the teacher you don't have to test that or otherwise our class may have people should know that so now your presence you don't have to inform others only something you couldn't learn, so you have to ask the teacher. And the teacher should try to give some aim, because unless you have some unique aim, you cannot become great. And inspiring aim should be there, and the teacher will be giving you that unflinching aim, and which must be said early in the life. Without aim, you are like a, you know, uh, you are uh, running, uh, what do you call, driving a, uh, see without a compass. So that aim has to be there and for which you have to work. And then you should try to become unique. And there are a lot of forces in this universe who will try to make you like anybody else. But no, you should try to become unique. And everybody should try to become unique. Now, as Michael Angelo, the sculptor, said, the greatest danger for most of us is not that our aim is too high and we don't miss it, but it's too low and you reach it early and you are happy. So you don't, uh, I mean, gain more and more things and you don't go up and up the ladder. And Anna Eleanor Roosevelt, the first lady of America, who was also known as the first lady of the world because of her activities, you know, she says that future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. So to dream, dream for a good thing. And you have to believe in those, yes, I can achieve it. Then only the future will belong to you. And, you know, this... Um, gentleman Abraham Lincoln, he realized the role of the teachers in bringing the children to the mature adult and how to make them unique. Realizing this, he used to keep on writing letters to the teachers of his son. And their historical letters, you can read them maybe in the net or in some books or some document, but few lines I'm tempted to quote try to, he says that, try to give my son the strength not to follow the crowd. When everyone is getting on the bad wagon, that we let him follow a different path, not going to any, everybody else. So that's what you need. And teach him to listen to all men, but teach him also to filter all he hears on his screen of truth. He'll hear and he'll listen to everybody, but not that he'll accept everybody. He has to see which one is good and which one is bad. So teaching him also to filter all he hears on the screen of truth and take only the good that comes through. Oh, only what beautiful language, how nicely he wrote. And then the student should have the inquisitiveness to ask questions, to know more things. So let him have the courage to be impatient and let him have the patience to be brave. So these are some of the few sentences, you know. And when you approach your guru, you have to try to extract. The grace of guru is like an ocean. So whatever you can extract, you will get only that much. You who can with the cup from ocean, you'll get only a cup full of water from the ocean. So 
if you want to extract more and more things from your guru, you should be able to do that. So you have to try to extract the best thing out of the mind of the guru. Uh, do not believe anything blindly. Try to know the reason. And you have to respect your teachers. And we say in India, Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Deva Mahasara, Guru Sakha, Para Brahma, Tasma Sri, Guru Be Namo. That's how we respect. They are known as Guru. In fact, government has also learned such things. I remember on the Guru Purnima day, the minister was inviting us to Delhi, 2018, 19. This year it was not possible. And the minister was felicitating the vice chancellor. They are the representatives of the teachers, you know. So the minister was felicitating, respecting all the vice chancellors. So as a mark of respect to teachers, we are celebrating 5th September as the Teacher's Day. And you have to remember that life is school. Pass all your tests. Problems are simply part of the curriculum. They'll come and they'll go away. And as I told you some time back, that no law has been made in the world without the key. So you have to remember that. And the lessons you learn, that will last lifelong. You try to learn good lessons. Good lesson does not mean only the good thing, but the other things also. So I'll skip this one, go to the, uh, just skip one or two, okay. Uh, yes. See, uh, then, uh, see Abdul Kalam's message, I'm not a handsome guy, but I can, I can give my hands to someone who needs help. Beauty is in my heart, not on my face. See, nice word by Dr. Kalam. Uh, Rabindranath Tagore told, the father, uh, told uh, one thing, that your education will make you free man, will make you free of the bondage. That's what in uh, this thing, Mukto Yathaya Mon, so Uttyo Yathaya Sip, Bengali hero. So that is what is education. And Sadhya Kanga told that how to become a good human being. The life is short, the vanity in the world is tangent. tangent. The alone live who live for others, you are trying to do something good, you are living. Otherwise, you are not living. You may appear to be, uh, to be living, but you are a living animal. The rest are more dead than alive. And this one, you told about your, um, that efforts that you have to put to become unique, to become good. So whatever work you undertake, do it seriously, thoroughly, and well, never leave it half done or undone, and never feel satisfied unless and until you have given your very best. So this is what Samiji told, so you have to do that. Uh, friends, I'll tell you about some intelligences. Already linguistic intelligence, I've told you. Certain abilities are there. Neurocognition uh, science has told that there are some eight abilities in our brain. First and foremost, one is the linguistic intelligence. That is your communication ability. Listening and understanding, written and oral expression. This is, I already explained you explain it to you, what is linguistic intelligence. Next one is the mathematical intelligence. That means you are able to take good decision. On your laptop, there may be thousands and millions of computer powers and data and all those things, but you don't know which one to use. So how to make the decisions. So there is a, say that hardware plus brainware is equal to constant. Suppose, you are getting less facility, that means less hardware. But your brainware is good, still you achieve the right side, with this plus this equal to this. So one is less, one is more, you are able to. But if your brainware is less, you will you be always demanding more and more facilities, more and more hardware. Then obviously the company will not like you, that this man is doing less, he is always asking for facilities and his output is not good. So that's what you have to remember. Third one is musical intelligence. That does not mean that you have to know music. No. It is the harmony in the enterprise that while you are working, how you kind of develop a synergy with the situation so that you feel good there. You can work peacefully there. You don't feel uncomfortable there in that circumstance. That is your musical intelligence. The fourth one is the kinesthetic intelligence. That means you have to use your body correctly. You may think, by I'm not a doctor, I'm not being a surgery, why do you, or I'm not a dancer, but no. You have to stretch day and night, 
your enterprise will try to extract you physically the whole day. You have to work a lot and you have to improve your body intelligence. Otherwise, you will be tired, you will not be able to work. That is your kinesthetic intelligence. That natural intelligence is the fifth, this thing. Uh, actually, what is happening, you know, there's so much of discontent in the nature. There is so much of environmental problem. Sir Martin Reed, the chairman of the Royal Society, he said that perhaps the 21st century may become the last century of the human beings because of the neglect and share exploitation of the nature and because of the terrorism. So we have to see that this does not become the last century for the human civilization. Ultimate challenges when in, in your enterprise, a lot of pollutants will be generated. How to treat them? So those kind of things you have to keep on mind, keep in mind that we don't follow, don't destroy the environment. Otherwise, this will be the last century. And the sixth one is the navigational intelligence. See, the pilot is flying an aeroplane, as you can see. He wants to land, but then he, this ground connection is cut off. He's not able to connect under that situation. It's an obscure situation. He has to, uh, under that situation, he has to land. So he has to use some sort of intelligence, navigational intelligence. So while you are working your enterprise, certain times it will be confusing situation. So you have to tackle that, that kind of situation. That is called your navigational intelligence so that you can take the correct decision. Uh, so this one is the sixth one. And then seventh one is the inter interpersonal and eighth is the interpersonal. Interpersonal is all others, how you manage with the people, that is your interpersonal, then you become a good manager. And interpersonal means knowing yourself. Because the situation around you is going to grow complex. And it is said that don't be afraid of that. That is the romance of the life you enjoy in the 21st century. Uh, in the 20th century, it was, there is not so much of indeterminate situation. Indeterminate situation will be more. So you have to have that interpersonal and interpers interpersonal both intelligence if you uh, want to be a good manager. And how you synergize the thinking of people, how you unleash their collaborative power that will decide the future of your career and future of your enterprise. So now there is a, people have come to a conclusion the best of the cinema movies cannot be created by computer. The best of the music cannot be composed by computer. The best of the enterprises cannot be conceived by the computer. And best of the customer relationship also cannot be devised by computer. Best of the food cannot be cooked by the computer and so on. That means uh, you have to have your eight intelligences so that if you work, I mean, work with those eight things nicely, uh, you'll be able to run your enterprise properly. That's what our neurocognitive science tells us. And about few things about the good teacher, we human beings are, I mean, sometimes we say that we are fortunate because we have numerous exceptional teachers on this earth who made school an exciting and interesting place. These teachers, they possess the passion for the subject. They inspire the students to play with ideas, think deeply about the subject matter, take on more challenging work. So they are the actual torch bearer of the society. They inspire all of us, uh, so motivated us. So they are the really teachers. Uh, these things I'll skip about that uh, knowledge they got. There are some commandment of the God on a teacher. I'll skip this. Uh, good quality of a teacher, put it, parental authority, your authority like parents, the students have to obey you, and corresponding responsibility, both have to come together. Dignity and reputation should be there. High moral values should be there, otherwise why the students will listen to you. Strong sense of self-respect and self-discipline, and behavior should be exemplary. So integrity should be beyond reproach, inside and outside the classroom. So you should have competence, you should have good authority, you should have sober looking, you should not use any grotesque dress, bad dress. So then you are a good teacher. Uh, teacher is one, see, who can ignite the imagination, inculcate love for the learning. The students will love to learn from him. They are the torch bearer of the society. They have the knowledge, they have the critical understanding. They will make you to acquire the knowledge. Be an expert in reasoning, sober looking, uh, pure, clean, and they are the 
when we search of their students. So next one skipping, this one also, and skipping. Uh, this one also skipping. Uh, William Osler. Higher education is a silent influence of the character on character. When a student gets influenced by a teacher, he tries to follow that teacher. Yes, that was his character, so I also mastered a character like this. And Martin Luther King says, the function of education is to teach one to think intensively, to think critically, intelligence plus character, that is the goal of the future education. Like that, there are many quotations, you can go through it. And then, uh, uh, yeah, George Washington, uh, you know all of you know about him. Education is the key to unlock the golden door of freedom because he was fighting for freedom of America at that time. So, Albert Einstein, each other. See, there is this thing that argument is an exchange of ignorance and discuss is an exchange of knowledge. When you are discussing, you are exchanging the knowledge, but you are arguing is both of you don't know anything, so you are arguing. And uh, Albert Einstein says, one thing I learned in a long life that all our science measuring against the reality is primitive and childlike. It's not kuch nahi hai. But still, it is the most precious thing we have. Without this, we will not have survived. Uh, see, the last part you read, a lamp cannot burn another lamp unless it is self, itself is burning. A teacher cannot teach unless he is himself learning. This was told by Tagore more than 100 years ago. The teacher must keep on learning new things. Things are changing. Uh, okay, this one is fine. Uh, this one also I'll skip because this thing will be anywhere there. That means and the, uh, one thing in this one, yeah, I'm, I'm Abdul Kalam told that worker instead of being skilled, that green one you can see, or semi-skilled, will be knowledgeable, self-empowered, and flexibly skilled you have to be because the things will keep on changing. So what you learn today may not be there tomorrow. Tomorrow you have to Keep on through the education should be more broad based. So that's why, so that's why you read, apart from your own subject, many more subjects so that you have the broad knowledge you can change according to the situation. See, about the importance of the teacher, Alexander the Great said, My parents merely gave me birth while my teacher gave me life. And you are referring to his great teacher, you know, uh, that Aristotle, the one of the greatest teacher and the philosopher. So this. I mean, people like him also realize this. There is Japanese saying about the teacher. Um, a poor teacher tells, and average teacher teaches, a good teacher explains, an excellent teacher demonstrates, and a great teacher inspires. Because the teacher has to inspire the student. They have to tell that you can do this thing. They must say that you are useless, tumse kuch hoga nahi. Don't, don't say that. You can do marvelous thing, provided you do these, these, these things. You have to do these things. And uh, that inspiration is needed nowadays. And that's why the free learning is coming, you know, that you come and uh, read the things, come to the class, there we discuss, to discuss and you learn it uh, as it used to be in the old days. And one con we are now coming to the end of this thing. Education without vision is a waste. That's what I'm using that. What I'm going to do after this education? The value should be there. You should be a valued man. You should be a good citizen of the country. Education without value is a crime. And education without value is a life burden. Uh, there are some people who are highly educated, but they have no value. Even highly educated people are something caught in corruption. They are jailed, you know? So those kind of education has no value. This is life burden for them. A nation with the army party, not a strong nation, but a People of strong character, they make a strong nation. Like you have Japan is not a very military now, very strong that way. Yeah. But there are people with the character, so they're very strong nation. So for sustainable human development, we have we should have value-based education, a spiritual education, there should be some lot of a spirituality, ethical education, as well as need-based education should be there. And whatever best you have, you give to the world. And the best will come back to you. And then I give a quotation from Upanishad. In Bengali, it says, Tumar moner gobiyo tome ichcha yaha tum kahai hive. In English, you are what your deepest desire is. When you want to go to heaven, you'll go. You want to go to hell, you'll go there. As is your desire, so is your intention. 
as your intentions for your will and as your will for your deed and as your deeds for your destiny your destiny will be that means decided by your deepest desire so your desire has to be good yeah i want to be a good professor i want to be a hotel manager i want to be a good ceo of a company but you have to start from bottom that you know uh, what you call lift for going up you have to use the ladders to gradually go up exactly and this is the um, respectful this thing sent by a student you know on teachers day this comes to issue sir happiness and then tell you about i feel so very lucky to have a teacher as nice as you the student love uh, writes like this you know and then this this prayer i do every day do me yoga this little more than this the sarve sam saste bhavatu when i close my eyes and pray to god and then i do meditation i do this at the end of my yoga sarve sam sante bhavatu sarve sam punnam bhavatu sarve sam mangalam bhavatu लोका समस्ता सुखले एवरीबॉडी बी हैप्पी लोका समस्ता सुखिनो भवन्ति ओम त्रयंबकम जजाम हे सुगंधि पुष्टि वर्धनम उपारतमेव वंदना वृत्त मच्छो मामृता ओम शांति शांति विश्वात आई आटर एवरी डे एंड गिव लॉट ऑफ पीस एंड आई टेल यू एट दिस एज ऑफ 70 71 माय मेमोरी पावर इज सेम एज इट यूज्ड टू बी एट द एज ऑफ 20 ग्रेट एंड दिस वन इज द लास्ट स्लाइड यू विल जोक uh everybody says teaching is so easy just like walking in a park but only the teacher knows the park is jurassic park with a variety of dinosaurs great okay this is the last one so great sir our students will be very happy to know all this precious knowledge from you and i hope the students uh, from gurunanak institute management will grow in their career path and they will be uh, with flying colors so if they wishes to be a general manager of a five star hotel definitely they can be a general manager if they wishes to be a chef they can definitely be a master chef if they sure, want to sure. be a uh, manager or a nice vice president of one particular company or ceo like sundar pichai definitely they will be able to get that position in future so thank you very much sir for your inspiring uh, speeches and mm -hmm. uh, a great learning for our students i do hope so thank you very much from our students sense also from guru nanak institute manager thank you sir thank you namaste welcome and thank you wish all the students a very good future thank you sir thank you all your blessings will be there with the students thank you sir so i leave the meeting now big pardon uh, so i'm leaving the meeting yeah yeah sure sir sure thank you very much sir thank you